Now, continuing here, a thousand pictures is worth one word. And I want to scroll through this for viewers. Radio listeners, go, go look at this article. The first thing they have is a Yugoslavian 10 billion dinar. A few years before hyperinflation struck there, and the private central banks uh, took over the area, because this is how they destroy you, it's how they destroy wealth. They come in power for politicians to do this. And, and, and as they devalue the money, the bankers buy everything up, then they hand you the, the, the inflated currency and all the, all the horrible things that come with it. Previously, 10 billion dinar was worth the equivalent of more than $10 million in the United States at the time. By the time they were done with the 10 billion dinar, you couldn't buy a weekend vacation with it. And it goes over that. So, so, so we're giving you examples here of what happens, how, how this inflation happens for a while, then suddenly it explodes. They've announced they are going to go into QE3. And that's why suddenly gold and silver are going up. Not because they've gone up, because the dollar's going down. And, and again, we'll scroll, scroll down uh, in that article, and I'll show you, uh, uh, if you're watching, uh, these, different, uh, these different currencies. There's the Yugoslavian $10 billion dinar. I, I guess by 93, you might have been able to go on a vacation for a day or two with that. 10 billion dinar. Uh, here's another one. Zaire, 5 million Zaires, 1992. 5 million Zaires. That would, uh, that would get you a dinner. A few years before, that would have bought you the whole country. Uh, Venezuela, 10,000 bolivars. 2002. Again, before they inflated it, 10,000 bolivars would buy you a house. By the time they were done, couldn't buy a broken down pinto. Ukraine, 10,000 of their currency. 1995. Continuing, here's Turkey, 1997, 5 million lira. Yeah, you know, previously that would buy you palaces and whatever else you wanted, but by the time they were done, 5 million lira wouldn't buy you a junk car. Continuing, Russia, 10,000 rubles. Before the Soviet Union collapsed, 10,000 rubles, you could live like a king for a year. By 1992, 10,000 rubles, you couldn't pay your bills for a week. Romania, 50,000 Leah, 2001, couldn't buy dinner for it. 50,000. You know, in the 1970s, for $50,000, you could buy a house today on average that cost $500,000. I bought a brand new Mustang in college for $13,000. That same Mustang today is $40,000 or more. Uh, Central Bank of China, 10,000 CGU, 1947. Couldn't buy anything with it. Banco Central of Peru, 100,000 Intis, 1989. Couldn't buy dinner for it. Nicaragua, 10 million Cordobas, 1990. Couldn't buy squat with it. Hungary, 10 million Pingo, 1945, worthless, like a Deutsche Mark. Greece, 25,000 drachmas, 1943, worthless, couldn't buy anything with it. Germany, a $1 billion mark in 1923 would not buy you a loaf of bread. It took a wheelbarrow of billion-dollar marks to buy the loaf of bread. There's a bunch of other examples of this. That's where we're going by design. Call my name out your All right, finishing up here uh, with an example of devalued currencies. It gets to the really bad ones at the bottom of the article at Big Gold by Jeff Clark, also at Infowars.com. Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. And, and I actually was mailed some of these by listeners multiple times. I had a um, $1 trillion one, and I had a $10 trillion one. This copy here... Uh, it says, I promise to pay to the person that presents this note $100 trillion. And by 19, uh, by 2007, this was in 2006, you couldn't even get a hotel room for that, the news was reporting. You couldn't buy anything of value with $100 trillion Zimbabwean money. And, uh, again, it doesn't need to get to that point 
to be devastating. I mean, you know inflation's already killing people on fixed incomes, folks on Social Security. And the government says, there's no inflation, there's no inflation. Everyone knows there is. People are getting their pay cut while inflation goes up. And just in our operations, we are reaching three, four times what we were reaching just two years ago. And before the Depression came three years ago, as audience went up, our revenue went up. Well, our revenue is flat, even though our audience has exponentially grown. What do you think has happened to all the rest of the media? Well, they're going bankrupt, whose audiences have become fractured, and they've got less audience in this debt economy. Can you imagine what other media is going through? Well, we know. They got secret Federal Reserve money, hundreds of billions of dollars domestically to quote thousands of publications, TV programs, and networks. Thousands of different subsidiaries, media outlets, hundreds of millions directly to MSNBC. You wonder why MSNBC comes out and says, if you don't like government health care, you hate black people. You wonder why they come out and attack the family, attack everything decent. That's what the, that's, that is a total U.S. government mouthpiece. You want to hear what the government has to say to you? Watch MSNBC. I mean, it is just brazen, absolute lies, race pimping, race division, wrapped in, we're love, liberals and love everybody. And are they investigated? No, News Corp is. Because News Corp plays a very dangerous double game. They play both sides of the awake free masses and the collectivist. They play both sides. Now, I haven't even gotten into our top story yet, and we've got a guest coming on for 30 minutes or so, uh, and um, I will keep them longer. There's just too much news, but they've got a really important subject coming up. We'll keep them about 40 after or so. And then um, I will get into the top story, and then Bob Chapman's joining us. But the good news is I heard local talk radio and Dallas talk radio this morning covering my own story better than I did. They actually read Paul Watson's article on air on all three shows I heard, two local Austin, one Dallas. I actually heard them reading Infowars.com and going, we've checked the links, it's true. Yeah, here's the Mayak Report, Homeland Security. Ron Paul's the number one threat along with returning veterans, gun owners, conservatives, white people. And this video shows that they're rebranding the American people as Al-Qaeda. This is a Homeland Security, domestic security force, Stasi takeover. All the callers agreeing, wow, wow, have the globalists miscalculated. It's one thing to brand Al-Qaeda and the scary brown people and sell folks on, yeah, get them, take their rights. As soon as the public... I don't care what color you are, figure out that the government's trying to use all this on the American people, it's over. It's over for you. Your little tool of staging terror is over. And the and Breitbart, the Daily Mail, Fox News, all quoted our article, and Breitbart, and, and, and contacted DHS and said, is this really your video showing 98% of the 10-minute video of white people being terrorists and minorities reporting them. Did you really make this? DHS said, yeah, it's ours. But we deny it's, it's racial. Of course it's racial. They're done teaching everybody that brown people are terrorists. Now we've got to learn that the white people are terrorists. Only big sis can be trusted when she's the real terrorist. Uh, yeah, here's one of the notes I've been mailed. Here's a $100,000 Republic of Argentina note and uh, just 15 years ago, their, their currency was worth more than the dollar. But after the private banksters came in and took over their country, uh, within just a four-year period, they devalued their currency down to almost absolute zero. I mean, it's not like Zimbabwe where, you know, there's $100 trillion notes to try to get a hotel room for the night. Uh, you know, this is $100,000 uh, to be able to rent a room for a week. But the 100000 was worth more than $100,000. I mean, you could buy a couple fancy cars for it at the time and rent a house for six months. Not anymore. And this is where, this is where we are going as a society. And I covered uh, some of that in the last hour. I haven't gotten into all the big economic news yet. I will get to that. Bob Chapman, of course, uh, with his, um, with his uh, weekly, weekly visit. Uh, joining us is going to be coming up, really getting into that in more detail. Uh, also, I want to get into Grassley says there's a DOJ cover-up and Fast and Furious investigation. Well, they've been caught. Now the FBI and DEA have been admitted that they've been uh, basically uh, ordered to be part of this uh, shipping guns to Mexico, but also to cartels inside the U.S. I mean, this, this makes Watergate look like uh, Nixon was some type of choir boy. 
I mean, this is so hardcore, sh shipping guns to gangs the government controls to knock out their competition in the drug trade. That's really what's going on. And as a side, side dessert, blaming the Second Amendment. And they don't care they've been caught. They're going ahead with it and saying outside of law, gun shops now do whatever the ATF tells them to do. You'll do whatever we say. We'll tell you how many guns you can sell. We'll tell you who you can sell them to. We're putting. We're going to start putting people on a no-buy list. Doesn't matter if there's no convictions. When you call to do the next check, you're just not going to get a gun. As White House Chief of Staff, now Chicago mob boss Rahm Emanuel called for two years ago. So it is just uh, absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning, uh, the information that uh, we've got on that front. We're also going to get into the heat wave. Uh, and the fact that uh, one reason power prices are going up all over the country. In fact, will you guys pull me that London Telegraph article where prices set to double in the next three years in England because of carbon pr prices on, on power? So not only the same thing here, you're paying more for power, and they won't let you build new power plants. So when it goes to peak times in the winter uh, or peak times in the summer, uh, then your power gets cut off, and they have controlled blackouts and people die in mass. I have a large stack of reports on that. New York suffers rolling blackouts. Heat dome covers one million square miles. It is true the jet stream is basically completely stalled over the United States, and that's happened before. Uh, DTE uh, begins uh, rotating blackouts in Detroit. Many summer school students going without AC. And see, people say, well, in the 50s we had to do that. Yeah, but if you, if you ever went, were in school in Dallas in kindergarten, I was in Margaret Sanger. Um, uh, eugenics and, and named uh, school there in Dallas and they had air conditioning but sometimes it wasn't working and the whole side of the building was windows that opened completely up they put fans in there and they'd open the doors up and it would circulate through the building the buildings were long so they opened windows on this side and that side so no matter which way the wind was blowing you got that breeze you see but 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 no now they're in government buildings that don't have windows my gut told me this morning when the, Os when the Oslo uh, bombing took place that they, they were going to play a white Al-Qaeda card. And, and again, I'm so close to this. I study this so much. I've learned to watch their preparatory brainwashing that's designed for unconscious, very dumbed-down Prozac fluoride heads. And so they always prep. Al-Qaeda is going to hit you. What do you do when they hit? We give our rights up. Now, that was going on before 9-11, and I was able to call, I was able to even call the target they were going to hit and who they would blame it on, on record. <laughs> in fact, I, I taped it two months before 9-11, well, I did it live and taped it, and I re-aired it on Access because it had been turned back in to randomly play, and it aired on the afternoon of September 11th, and we always had positive comments to the station. They had hundreds of threats because it was a two-and-a-half-hour show where I said the government's going to blow up the World Trade Center and blame it on bin Laden. Imagine, folks, on a two-hour show, 4 to 6 p.m. in Austin, watching a TV show where I'm saying the government's going to blow up the World Trade Center and blame it on bin Laden. They thought it was live reporting. I was showing the World Trade Center, saying they're going to blow this up. I don't know how to explain. I just get thousands of data points and stream them in together. And God's supercomputer, we've all got one, and I'm able to predict what they're going to do. Now, I don't have the crew... The energy, the time, only because this will wake people up. For over a year, I've said white al actually about five years, but in the last year, I said now's the time. They're going to launch white al-Qaeda attacks in Europe against soft targets, car bombs, shopping malls. They, they love to target kids, it, like Operation Gladio when the U.S. government blew up school buses and shot up schools and blamed it on the communist. I said the... the they're going to target kids, and I've said it over and over, and it will come when they're in the final phase of imploding each region. Well, even Sarkozy was in Reuters last night saying this is a Marshall Plan, an IMF takeover of Europe. This is great. They have designed this whole thing to actually set up a euro and then implode it into a new corporate receivership. And then they're only writing off the debts of smaller banks that aren't part of the big six. And that I, I shot a special video at midnight last night about this on the Alex Jones channel. Now, Bob Chapman's riding shotgun with us. I haven't asked him yet if he can go into overdrive, uh, which, again, the main AM and FMs will be off with us in the next hour. Some do carry the fourth, but we'll be Internet only at PrisonPlanet.tv and Infowar streams. Still, 
you know, 100,000 people over the hour listening, millions later watching the videos of it. And s some stations do carry it.